Hello, I'm Roger Webb and this is a Vetric Aspire tutorial. Now, it's down here in Tasmania, it's a winter's day, howling rain and freezing cold and it's a Saturday. <laughs> and of course everybody's inside with this damn virus, so um, what do you do? Start dreaming about food. So, a nice chicken dinner. A nice three-dimensional chicken dinner. So let's... <laughs> let's draw it up. Let, let's, uh, let's bring a, a model in and create a 3D model of a nice chicken dinner. So, we've got some dimensions here. I'm not sure whether these are the correct dimensions I require. Um, model in the centre of the material, uh, top of the material as a zero, which is fine. Mahogany, that's okay as well. So we're going to okay that. We're going to come up here and we're going to import a bitmap picture or a grayscale. And it's down here somewhere. Here we go, number 14. And there's our chicken dinner. And it's just started to howl with rain and goodness knows what outside. I hope it's not coming over the mic. Anyway, uh, something a little different. This, this is a grayscale image that I found and I've actually just put my name up here. And I've just written this in a medium gray color. That's all I've done. And this is a full grayscale image. Now this is not a photograph that is changed to a grayscale. This is an actual scanned 3D D image. That's why it's so crisp and clear. Okay. So the next thing to do then, as we've already had this or have this highlighted, you can see that by these purple sort of dotted line on the outside of it. Um, we are going to go to our modeling tool. So we're going to come here to create a create a component from a bitmap image and we're going to press that and go to the 3D screen and already it's not a bad image if you left click your mouse you can move the model around in space and have a look at it see how thick it is and you can see my name up here has even come out. I'll zoom in, pan down. It's come out. It's not, not too bad, actually. So that really, when you've got a grayscale image, that's all you have to do is write in a sort of, you know, the darker the color, the shallower this is going to be. The whiter the color, the deeper this is going to be when you're dealing with a grayscale image. This is one method of writing onto material and becoming 3D. Okay, um, we've got a bit of leftover material here actually. Well, we can take care of that right now if we go back into the resize and we want to get rid of this top and bottom so it's in the Y and it's, let's go to the 2D screen a minute. Can work out how much it is. Um, what's that about 20 millimeter? About 40 millimeter. So if we go here and say uh, 260. Uh, oh, not quite enough. 250 maybe then. Aha. See, I pushed the button twice. There we go. 
and that looks okay you know this program is very forgiving uh, you know you can sort of uh, it doesn't matter if you make a mistake you can quite easily you know sort of um, take care of it then so back into the 3d now we're going to make this it's already quite a, a nice 3d model but what we're going to do is let's have a look it's quite nice but we can make this you know, a lot nicer so what we're going to do is we're going to come and double click on this which will bring this dialog box up and we're going to reshape the height uh, let's bring it up to about 10 oh look at that immediately immediately we get a fantastic representation of a lovely 3d mail I'm gonna run with that I think let's have a look that's a lovely chicken I know I'm gonna get some comments about that cockerel uh, let's take it to let's take it to 10 millimeter like a nice fat chicken okay I'm gonna run with that and do you know I'm not even going to smooth this relief I'm because I think the slight imperfections actually go to making this such a nice model actually so we're gonna go straight in and so we're gonna close that first of all now you can either get to the tool pass by clicking the box there or going straight in here to tool pass I'm going to do a rough in tool path first um, uh, thickness 20 millimeter that's that's actually 19 millimeters which is three quarters of an inch I will start doing some of these tutorials in inches for you um, center of the material that that's fine uh, it doesn't matter to me whether I with this particular one whether I start in the center or the um, bottom left hand corner but uh, you know I about 50% of the time that I'm doing a, a uh, carving I'll start in the middle other than that I'll start in this left corner but middles fine uh, top of the block that's okay always have a good base if you leave this too th skinny it will warp over time five millimeter safe height that's fine home position zero zero in the middle of the material and five millimeter above it that's okay um, material boundary that's fine that's exactly what we want let's choose a tool um, in actual fact that says 13 millimeter and it's actually not the tool that I'm going to be using so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose that one and I'm I'm going to copy that I'm going to pick uh, I'm going to pick the bottom one and I'm going to edit it because it's 12.7 millimeters because the one I've got is half an inch and that's the metric equivalent so I'm going to say 12.7 12.7 that's these are all okay because you can actually modify these when you're you know for whatever material that you are going to so apply that and we'll okay that this is now updated edit it 12.7 three millimeter depth that's okay because if you have it deeper with something like this you're going to tend to you can sort of 
split the wood away where you don't want to uh, you know lose some of the wood uh, step over that's okay as well which is just about 30 percent now I'm going to take this figure up on my machine so uh, if you're going to sp speed up the actual movement of the tool through the material you have to increase the RPM otherwise the tool can get bogged down 60 and uh, I personally have the plunge rate at 30% sorry 30% 50% of the feed rate and this is millimeters per second tool number one I'm going to OK that where did we talk past go? Um, raster operation along the X. Yeah, we'll, t we'll take ramp moves. Oh, hang on. Along the X is fine. It's a rough in, I don't need ramp moves. Um, safe said. Coordinates are fine there. 3D roughing, OK. Calculate. Oh. That looks pretty fair to me. I always like to have a look. Sometimes you can tell whether something isn't quite right just by looking at the toolpath itself. Okay, okay, back into toolpaths. I don't want to come to this yet. I want to do a finishing boundary two millimeter. This is absolutely right. Um, let's just edit this. Two millimeter ball mill, and it's a tapered ball mill. That's a little bit much. I'm going to alter that to 0.25 of a millimeter, otherwise, you're going to have little lines left. Or you know you might be able to detect detect them. So that's okay. Twenty four thousand RPM. That's good. Sixty thirty. Um, I find that works best with my machine. So I'm going to OK that. Oh, don't know why that keeps on popping back in. Never mind. Raster. No, that's okay. Finishing one. Yep, yeah, okay, calculate that. Now we can simulate it. Um, I'll try Dark Oak. That is a nice chicken dinner. Not too fast on the material, though. And my name didn't come out very well there. No, the name didn't come out there too well there. Oh well, it was just a little test anyway, to see whether it would happen. So let probably, if I section that off and did it with a, a one millimeter ball mill it might come out but um, you know I, I just did that just to see what would happen really more than anything um, let's change the material to I, mahogany was rather nice actually that's okay 
I quite like that. In mahogany. Okay. That is a really nice dinner. The only thing that, you know, sort of didn't come out really well was was this. I'm not too worried about that actually. But the chicken dinner came out quite well. Um, now then. Close this. Saving the toolpath. Now then, a lot of people are having trouble with this. And it's very, very easy. So what we're going to do, see the three and a half inch floppy disk, press that. Um, we're going to output it to a file. Now, the chances of your machine being listed here are very low. So, because normally people, you know, sort of have this program to get a CNC machine or they have built their own CNC machine. Uh, router that is but it doesn't matter router mail doesn't matter come in here now if you've if you're using millimeters use G code millimeter tap if you're using inches it's G code inches tap this is standard G code okay the most basic G code and every machine will understand this even you know everything has tormac um what else can i think of that are high-end machines um datron you know even this you can run this into a datron uh program and it will understand it save tool paths um gico tap rough in actually i'm going to save that to my desktop that's where it was. Okay, save. Now this one, double click on it. Close. So it's visible now. I didn't have it visible just now. And so that's highlighted. Formal. Save tool path. Desktop. And save. And now I can take it to my machine and run it whenever I want to. So, thank you for watching. I hope it's been informative to you for this Vetrica Spire tutorial number 14, I think. Um, I have some of these tutorials on this main channel and other tutorials I have on my second channel. I've had a lot of requests from my viewers to see more of Vetric Aspire, so here we are. So thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe, and I'll see you again on the next video. So it's bye for now.